The word yoga means union. Union means whether you are aware of it or you are not aware of it, right now you are happening here as a part of everything else. What the trees exhale, you are inhaling. What you exhale, the trees are inhaling. Not just on the level of respiration, on all levels this is happening. What you think as myself is just a psychological boundary that you have set up. So yoga means consciously obliterating the boundaries of your individuality. So if you sit here, if you experience everything around you as myself, this is yoga. If you experience all this as myself, do you need morality? Be good to people, don't harm them, don't do this, don't do that, would it be necessary? No. Did anybody teach you out of these five fingers, this is a small finger, don't cut it off? Is there a morality needed like that? Anything that you feel is a part of yourself, with that you don't need any values, ethics, morals, nothing, because it's a part of you. This is what yoga means, you experience everything as a part of you. When somebody experiences the whole universe as a part of himself, then we say he is a yogi. Charles Darwin said, that you evolved out of a monkey. You were a monkey, then you became a man. Some of the genetic scientists are saying this, that the difference, the DNA difference between a chimpanzee and you is only 1.23 percent. So in that sense, physiologically you're only 1.23 percent away from a chimpanzee. Not a big difference, isn't it? A shade, it's just a shade of difference. But in terms of intelligence and awareness, you are worlds apart from a chimpanzee. So your problem is just this, you have an intelligence for which you don't have a stable enough platform and that's why yoga, to create a stable platform so that your intelligence works for you. Right now, you may call it so many things, so many exotic names have come up, stress, tension, anxiety, depression, madness, all kinds of things. All this essentially what it means is, your intelligence has turned against you, that's all. You can give any number of reasons, but essentially your intelligence has turned against you. If your intelligence was working for you, would you create blissfulness or misery? Bliss. This is all. Why your intelligence has turned against you, there's no stable enough base. So the entire yogic system is about this, that you create a stable base so that your intelligence works for you. If your intelligence turns against you, no power in the universe is going to save you, you are a done thing. If you become what you make up, unfortunate, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah. Your thoughts belong to you or you belong to the thoughts, you must make up your mind. They can be dangerous, those thoughts. They're not dangerous, they're fantastic. Only thing is, fantastic things mishandled can kill you. A car can kill you, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing, an automobile. It's made our lives. If you handle it irresponsibly, it kills you. Every possibility is like this. Every possibility, if you do not harness it, it becomes a problem. So the same goes for your cerebral capability. If you do not harness it, it's a serious problem. It's taking away eighty percent of the human beings are simply suffering. They don't need any outside help. They're on self-help. So understand, when I say I'm thinking this, you... another word, another way of saying it is, I'm making up this, I'm making up that. You can make up whatever you want, as long as you enjoy it. To transform your life, you want to do it in two minutes. So is that what your life is worth? So if your life is worthwhile, is it not important that you invest a certain amount of time and energy, rather than looking for this stupid stuff of one mantra with which I will transform my life? It will not happen like that. That's the reason why most people have remained the way they have remained, because they've not invested in their well-being. So it's a serious long-term investment. It is not long-term. I would say, if I ask you, is your life worthwhile enough to invest thirty to thirty-two hours of focused time to bring some basic transformation within you? 
If I teach you a way where you can manage your chemistry the way you want, but we need thirty-two hours of focused time, do you think your life is valuable enough for that much investment, I'm asking? Yes. Then you must invest, that's what is called in an engineering program. It's thirty-two hours of focused time. We can format it in different ways, but that much investment has to go in. See, all human experience comes from within, isn't it? I don't know what kind of geniuses thought these things. I know in America there must be a million books telling you how to, uh, you know, milk happiness from something else or somebody else. <laughs> but all human experience is generated from within. What comes from within you must be the way you want it, isn't it? Isn't that simple enough, I'm asking? What comes from around you may not be the way you want it. But what comes from within you must be the way you want it. If whatever happens within you the way you want it, will you be blissed out or miserable? Blissed out. See, most people understand complexity as intelligence. If they make themselves difficult, they are supposed to be intelligent. Making a simple thing difficult is not intelligence. Making a very complex thing simple is intelligence, isn't it? So wrong sense of intelligence, idea of intelligence has entered people's minds. They think if they make a problem out of every solution, they're intelligent. No, no. If you find solutions for every problem, that is intelligence. That's my understanding. So essentially, this whole... this whole attitude and questioning and this kind of thing has happened to the world in a big way because our education is confusing people to make them believe that memory is intelligence. Memory is not intelligence. Memory is useful as data, but intelligence is a different dimension. We have gobbled this up that we have made children believe from a very early age, if you remember something, you are smart. No, no, a tape recorder can remember everything. This camera can remember everything. This doesn't mean it's intelligent. So, one major aspect of my work is to separate these two. In your... within your experience, your memory and your intelligence are two different things. If you have an intelligence which is unsullied by memory, you will see everything just the way it is. But if you look at everything through the filters of your memory, everything is prejudiced. People who ask, all this is fine, but what's the takeaway? They want a commandment. We are talking about consciousness. Commandments won't fly. Commandments means you're trying to fix your life. Consciousness means you want to liberate your life. My intention is you must liberate your life. People come and say, Sadhguru, please teach us how to control my mind. Say, you want your mind controlled or liberated? Oh, yes, yes, liberated, but how to control? because they think that intelligence is a serious problem and it's been in their lives. So what is the solution? If you remove a part of your brain, you will be fine. <laughs> You're es essentially complaining, I wish I had the brain of an earthworm, this human brain I am not able to handle. Yes, that is a fact. We have come to a place where to grow our food, we need chemicals. To be healthful, we need chemicals. Today, seventy percent of the population is on prescription medication of some sort. To be peaceful, we need chemicals. To be joyful, we need chemicals. To be ecstatic, of course, you have ecstasy. So we are going towards chemicals in a huge way. The water that you drink is full of chemicals, the air that you breathe is like that, and the food that you eat is like that. So if ninety percent of humanity goes into chemical consumption, consciously or unconsciously, if they consume a lot of it, the next generation that we produce will be of a lesser quality than who we are. That's a crime against humanity. What I'm saying is, the important thing about life, whether it's a grasshopper out there or you, both of us are striving to be the fullest possible life that we can be. A grasshopper is trying to be a full-fledged grasshopper, a human being is trying to be a full-fledged
So suppose you cut off one of grasshopper's legs which is supposed to hop, the hopping leg if you take it off, have you enhanced its life, I'm asking you? No. So similarly for a human being, if you take away any of his faculties in any way, even temporarily, have you enhanced his life? No. So intoxication is just that, it is taking away your faculties for a period of time, but if you continuously do it, it'll take it away for your life. So you're taking away or subjugating your faculties for a little bit of pleasure or maybe a lot of pleasure, whatever, however you wish to describe it. But the important thing is you're taking a backward step with life because life can only be enhanced by sharpening and increasing our faculties, not by decreasing our faculties. Our ability to be active physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if this is in any way crippled, this means we are taking a backward step, though there may be pleasure attached to it. Every human being wants his life enhanced. If you don't show them proper ways to enhance, they will find shortcuts. See, a man who goes to the bar and a man who goes to a church or a temple or a whatever, they're seeking the same thing, they're trying to enhance their life, isn't it? If you do not show them a proper way, they will take whatever ways are available on the street, that's all. That's why I'm saying it's not a moral issue for me, it is just that it sets you backward. You want to go forward, but it sets you backward.